today I'm going to show you a video tutorial on how to crochet the super cute and super easy candy bonbons, like wrapped peppermint candies. It's a really great project for beginners. It's great for using up your yarn scraps, so let's get started. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance, A, if my dogs start barking, that, that's just life here at my house and uh, B for the terrible lighting. I had to shoot this at night. I actually shot um, this tutorial during the day and then when I went to edit the video I guess I had somehow deleted <laughs> some important steps. So it's a do-over. Anyway, okay, so these are some examples of candies that I've already crocheted. Um, this is Lion Brand Vanna's Choice Baby in Mint. This one is also Lion Brand Vanish Choice in red and white, and I just striped it. Start a new row, you would switch to a new color, and I'm not going to really get into that in this tutorial, but I just wanted to show you an example, you know, if you're if you're more familiar with crocheting. And I also worked um, a sparkly yarn in there too, just to make it more fun. And um, but today for the tutorial. I'm going to try using Karen Simply Soft Parte. This is a pretty lavender and it has a lavender sparkle going through it, so I thought that would be fun. And for your worsted weights in this pattern, especially for a beginner, I would recommend an eye hook. This is a Susan Bates bamboo handle. You don't have to get the bamboo handle, but I've been liking it lately. It helps me from my hands from getting sore. And then finally, all you need is a one and a half inch styrofoam ball and these are available I would say in most craft stores. I've purchased them at Beverly's, Michael's, and Joann's so they're pretty much everywhere. And again they come in different sizes but I really like the one and a half inch ones and that's um, what my tutorial is centered around. And uh, also Pretty much what we're going to do here, let me focus this, is we're making a rectangle. <laughs> that's why this is a really easy pattern. So we're making a rectangle that's, we're going to work this way just because I like how the stripes come out, but you can do whatever you want. As long as your rectangle is three and a half inches wide and four and a half inches long, it will fit around your styrofoam ball. And you can get this template and the whole pattern at my blog, blog.twinkychan.com. I will put a link somewhere on the YouTube thingy. I don't know. I'm new at this. Let's learn together. Okay. Where the heck is the end of my yarn? Jeez. Jeez Louise. Okay. Let me make sure this will be in focus. I don't have autofocus on this camera. I don't know why I'm using it. <laughs> I just got it, so I'm playing with it, so bear with me. Okay, so to start off the project, we're going to foundation chain. Now, the chain is going to be about, for me, um, four and a half inches long. And that, for me, is about 17 chains. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's 17. And then you know that you're done when this chain kind of wraps around the circumference of the styrofoam ball. Um, it's better for it to be slightly tight than too loose. If it's too loose, it just tends to look a little saggier, so um, you just want to make sure it gets around the ball comfortably. And then you just start crocheting a rectangle. So I'll skip the first chain and then work a single crochet in the next chain and then a single crochet in the next chain and just one single crochet in each chain. So since I chained 17, that for me will be 16 single crochets. 
And if you're using a different yarn or a different hook or you work in a slightly different gauge and tension than I do, as long as your chain fits around the ball and you do an even amount of single crochets in each row, like, you will be good to go. It's a very flexible tutorial. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so I'm at the end of the row. And then chain one and turn. This is where you would introduce a new color if you wanted to stripe it, but again, we're not doing that. So I'm just going to keep working single crochets in each stitch, just evenly. No increasing, no decreasing, no changing what stitch. The whole thing is simply single crochet. Okay, I'm going to fast forward to finishing the rectangle. Okay, so I am almost done with my 14th row, which for me gives my rectangle about three and a half inches this way. And uh, I must say this Karen Simply Soft party, I'm kind of into it. Karen Simply Soft normally is a little bit too light for a lot of my projects. I like something with a little more bulk. But maybe because they added the sparkle in this, they gave it a little more bulk, so it feels kind of like a Lion Brand Vanna's Lion Brand Vanna's choice to me, which is kind of like my most favorite weight. Okay, so you're gonna use your end to do some sewing. So I would leave about a foot and then cut it. This is the worst scissors ever. And then to finish a project to break off a project. Just yarn over one more time and then pull it all the way through. And now we're gonna we're gonna zoom in for a closer look. So first up, um, you're gonna string that long tail through a tapestry needle so you can sew it. And then I'm gonna put this down here so that we can see what we're doing. So with your three and a half inches here and your four and a half inches here, you're gonna place the styrofoam ball right in the middle and try to get it as close to the middle as possible. It's just easier to move around. Once you start sewing it up, it can kind of start sticking um, to the yarn. So all you do, and this is already threaded, is fold up, I guess, the candy wrapper and you're just gonna sew this end shut. And I don't do anything fancy. I just use a whip stitch. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty. I mean, you can't really see it since it's all the same color, so. I'm really terrible at sewing and this may be the first video evidence of me sewing, so I'm sorry. <laughs> If you're cringing because it's terrible, but you know, I get the job done and that's what's important. So just keep sewing this to the end. And you just want to make sure that this end matches up too and that nothing has shifted around. And um, tie a knot. I've heard that some people don't believe in tying knots, but I do. I feel like the stuff that I crochet, you know, lives a life and it needs to stay together. Um, and then weave in the end to secure it. You don't have to go too crazy with the weaving. It's such a small project, but I tend to like to weave one way and back the other way in all my projects, and then weave your other tail through. Again, don't go too crazy. It should be fine. Okay. So here's just an up close and very personal view of this. Um, from now on when we work, um, just try to keep the seam in the back and keep all the pretty stuff like the bows in the front. So now we're gonna create that candy look by pinching the ends together and sewing them. Or not, well you can sew them if you want, but I just tie them. 
um, but I use a surgeon's knot and I will show you what that is. So what you're going to do is you cut two pieces of yarn, one for each side, and um, this is Lion Brand Vanna's Choice in Pink Poodle. And I give myself like a foot because I'm really bad at tying knots, but um, if you're good at it, I guess you don't have to waste so much yarn. But I have two foot lengths, um, one for each knot. So it's pretty easy. All you do is make sure the seam is at the back and start tying a knot like normal. Um, but what'll happen is, since you're bunching together so much material, if you start pulling on this, and like the second you release it to tie a second knot to square it off, like it'll start unraveling again. So the surgeon's knot is just tucking this and pulling it through one more time. And it kind of helps the whole thing stick together while you tie your bow. So pull. And you want to pull pretty tight to close this hole up, but if you pull too tightly, the yarn will break, so you kind of have to be careful. And then I'll do one more surgeon's knot to secure that. And then you tie a bow. And this is the part that I'm not very good at. But um, just kind of try to make it cute and little and pretty. I feel like I have man fingers, like I'm just not very good at doing small things. Okay, so then you trim the tails. And it's done. Then you just do the other side. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you had fun and learned a little bit and um, if you want to show me your finished candy garlands or candy ornaments or candy hair pieces I'd love to see. Have a happy holiday and um, happy new year. Bye!